Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Javier's a virtual wor uh, editing workshop. I don't know what to call it. Uh, actual uh, fun fact is I don't know the titles of my videos literally until like the minute I'm posting them. So in, in honor of that, I don't know the name of this class. So we'll just call it the virtual video editing or creation workshop, or whatever. So um, I actually do YouTube lives like all the time. And I'm very used to people messaging and, and putting on the comment box like, questions you might have. So free, please feel free to be using that as I do the class. Um, so I am here as for just, you know, if you have a question, you're not interrupting me. If you do write something down, what I'll do is, and you know, I'll periodically be checking it. So if you have a question, uh, just hit chat on the right side hand, I believe, and you can have it pop up and then just, um, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll make sure to answer any questions you might have. So this is going to be more interactive. Um, and I also, this is the first time I'm actually you know, I've done classes before for my home group where I'm like, hey, this is why you should do YouTube. Hey, look how good I am at YouTube. Hey, look, you should, I'm doing good at YouTube. You should too. But uh, I've gotten to the point now, I don't know if it's the whole environment or what, or uh, the point in my career where I'm just like, okay, I'm not, I'm done telling people they should be doing YouTube. Um, now I'm just going to focus on the people that either want to make videos or, or are making videos. And they just want to want to share what I do to make videos. Um, you could pull some things that I do. You can, uh, you know, maybe do my style, whatever it is, I don't care. I mean, at this point, I'm just trying, I'm trying to service people in a better way and just say, hey, this is how I create videos. So um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, please make sure to comment there below. Um, I prefer you to have video, and that way I can see much more people instead of just gray boxes, but you guys don't have to as well. It's totally fine, whatever you wanna do. So <clears throat> let's see, more people are coming in. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a share screen I'm showing you guys a little more about behind the scenes and whatnot. But uh, before we begin, I do want to just uh, make sure, I guess I can't talk to you guys. So I just want to hopefully everyone's doing okay. Hopefully everyone's doing pretty good. Um, for my business specifically, the first you know two weeks, I kind of slowed down on purpose because I really was concerned about the coronavirus because my daughter has this, a thing where if she uh, gets sick, she has seizures. So we were really concerned about that. But funny enough, this last month or a few weeks, it's actually transitioned pretty well. We're almost like, you know, just an idea about me, I did 40, 45 transactions last year and about 80% of them came from a YouTube channel. Um, so now it's slowed down, but now most of the people that I'm coming in from my YouTube channel are meeting me through Zoom first. And now then the first time we go meet is that showing. So it's actually really been a great transition for me where the whole virtual thing has really started taking off. Now it's going to be obviously some growing pains, but for everyone out here who's here um, learning today, I hope you guys were able to kind of transition as well. And um, you know, doing that well. So, um, let's see, get some comments. Don't be shy guys. Happy to learn from today from Vancouver, Canada. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Hassan. Thank you for coming in. All right, guys. So first and foremost, for those that don't know who I am, uh, my name is, let me see, share computer sound. My name is Javier Vidania. I actually uh, run a YouTube channel. Um, currently have 27, 28,000 subscribers. Uh, I started about two and a half years ago. I uh, started, uh, well, the, the way I started was a little different because I actually, I've always made YouTube videos, but they've always failed miserably. So I, I've done it all. I've done the, the, you know, I've started the funny skits with my friends eight years ago to, uh, you know, trying to do a real estate podcast or even trying to do the real estate show where I talk about a podcast version of real estate stuff, or I've even tried certain things like, um, uh, uh, like a vlogging thing where I would vlog my family and, and everything that I did wouldn't work because I was making it for the wrong reasons. I was making it because I wanted to be a YouTuber, not a realtor, not necessarily giving value to anyone. Two and a half years ago, uh, I was on Facebook. My daughter was just born and I was, you know, having a low point. And I, I saw that on Facebook, I don't know if you guys remember two or three years ago, uh, Facebook uh, was having really, uh, YouTube, realtors are having a lot of uh, success with like Facebook ads. They would have a real geek site or a boomtown and just run ads and get clients that way. And one thing that bugged me is there was this one ad that had like zero down, buy this house today. And it was a really beautiful house. And it, it clearly wasn't the right situation. It was, it was breaking all kinds of federal housing laws and you know, whatever laws for, for that sign of stuff. But the comments were filled with people that were super interested. Now I was a little salty. And secondly, I, I just did some inward thinking. I said, am I upset at the realtor? Or am I upset at these people? It wasn't the people's fault. They just didn't know what they didn't know. So I already had all the equipment, all my failed experience editing and creating videos. I pulled out a, ca a video and I did this my first video, which is right here of how much does it actually buy to cost a home. 
Um, and the point of this video was I got my camera out and I talked to that camera like it was a client. Um, I believe my most valuable conversations with people are when I first meet them. So, you know, during the consultation. So I, I literally just had a consultation with myself. I was crazy just in the office talking to my camera. And now to this day, it's one of my most popular videos, funny enough, but I started making a few videos and I was trying to experiment, experiment and then they all, they were failing again. So I actually, it was like around November, December, and I just took two months off. I said, no, YouTube is not for me. Came back January and I started getting a lot of views. Like I had like a hundred subscribers. I got a thousand views and I said, Hey, there's something happening here. And I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And now my, my video editing and my, I guess my personality on cameras changed and grew. And now I'm at this point where I have 28,000 subscribers. And not only do I get a consistent business for my YouTube, I mean, it's not even a ref, like a lead source for me. It's, it's my life. Like I'm, if I don't do YouTube, my business and my life doesn't do well. Like it's just part of me now at this point. I don't consider myself a realtor or a YouTuber. It's just, that's just what I am, right? So for everyone out there, I'm not saying you're going to be a YouTuber. I'm not saying you're going to be, you know, you can even be bigger than me or less than me. That's fine. Whatever you want to do with it. However, I do believe that everyone can be making videos to improve their business. Um, even if it's for YouTube or for something to send to your clients. Um, I hope that you can learn at least my editing process and my creation process and you can implement it to use in whatever way you want it. So first and foremost, I want to start off. Um, now I'm at the point where I have a, a certain expectation of what videos to make. So I can't just like, for example, my, my channel, I can transition to start making, you know, cooking videos or uh, I don't know, other kind of videos. So I'm going to kind of start this process as if it was someone who was starting out their channel. Um, so then I would show you what I would used to do when I would uh, start making a video. So first and foremost, step one, what I would do for my video creation process is, you know, I don't have this list of like video topics that I have. I don't have uh, a super fancy, sorry, I'm at home as you can tell, and those are my dogs barking. Um, I don't have this super fancy list of things of what, you know, what kind of topics I want to make. Really, I would just live my life and whatever questions that would come to me from my clients or certain topics that would, um, I feel like were relevant to what's happening at the time, I would just make a video about it. I think the number one mistake people do on YouTube is they start making videos based off what they think people want to hear. It, especially realtors. I mean, I'm going to put the blame on you guys. You guys or us, we do this the most often. Realtors start a YouTube channel. They say, hey, what do people want to hear? They want to hear about how ways to take title, you know, or hey, how does this program work? And they start making videos that real life buyers are not actually looking up. So um, I would start the opposite way and start making videos that people are actually, you know, get myself out of my realtor head, put myself in the position of someone who's looking to buy, who's on YouTube, you know, trying to get a better idea of what to do and thinking of the questions they would ask. So for example, let's start off with one of my old, older videos. Um, like um, uh, for, let's just say this one, you know, uh, this one, what's the difference between a down payment and closing costs? Now, um, a realtor might make a video say, hey, uh, down, uh, what are closing costs? Or uh, how much, how much are sellers concessions, right? We like to use these terms that are in our real estate lingo, but not lingo that people are actually using that are in real estate. So I, I started with this topic in hand and let's say when I wanted to make this video, I don't know my title. I don't know what kind of video I would make. The first thing I always do is I search what my competition is. Now I wouldn't say this competition. I just want to get a feel of what's, you know, before, I, before you go in the pool, I'm going to put my toes in to see if it's cold or warm. Right? So when I made this video, I would, I came here and I searched, you know, down payment and closing costs. I want to know what people see when they look it up. So in this case, I mean, I come out here, which I'm really happy about, but I would actually watch, you know, some of the videos that people were making about this topic. And I want to get an idea of what, what's going through their mind and what they're saying to their clients. That way I know what's, I, want, I guess, I, I mean, I'm only ashamed to say it. And in my head, when I was starting YouTube and I had almost no subscribers, I looked at the certain realtors that were in YouTube already and I wanted to see what they were doing. And I said, okay, I'm going to catch up to them. So I would, in, I guess in a competitive way, would see what my competition is for that specific topic, see what those people are saying and see how, what I could bring more in value to them. So I would sit down and watch all of these videos and start getting an idea of what's out there. I want to see what people are saying and what not saying. And specifically putting myself in the mind of a, of a consumer, like what did I not fully understand? So 
once that's done and I know my composition, I know the, the kind of video I want to make, I don't do a script. Um, I, what I really do is I pull up my notepad. Just see if I have the one I use for videos around. Yeah, so it's, it's not even like fancy notes. This is the, this is the thing, guys. You guys are gonna think like I have a super special ways of making videos, but it's not. I just kind of write my key topics of what I want to talk about. You know, uh, one, two, three, four. I don't go too much into detail. I personally do not like scripts. I think uh, the average YouTube viewer is smarter than most viewers um, out there, so they're gonna know if it's scripted or not. So I just get a general idea and I let my experience have do the talking for me. Now, over time, I've done a better job of, you know talking a certain way so it's easier to edit after the fact which i'll show you guys right now but i i just do the talking and i just just start chatting start you know uh, having that conversation with that camera like if it was my client and start making the video um if i forget a topic or you know if i just to kind of reference what i'm going i'll look at my notes but most of the time i write the notes down initially and i kind of just take it from there um i don't believe in scripts if you want to do scripts that's totally fine i would advise you though um if you want to be more prepared do like a kind of like a flow chart of like category, you know, first five minutes, I'm talking about this, talk about subtopics or sub settings of what you want to chat about um, and then start from there. So, so at this point, I already know what kind of video I want to make. I know the general idea of what my competition is doing on YouTube. And then uh, secondly, I have the, my topics created of what I, what I want to chat about. Then I go to the next step, which is the actual recording. So now I'm going to stop real quick and I want to go and, see if I have any questions of people that might want to ask me. So I'm going to chat real quick. Well, actually, I think I have to go off the share screen. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop sharing really fast. All right, guys, any questions? No questions. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, one question. Elizabeth, does it matter if videos are live or recorded? <clears throat> so there are people out there that do Facebook Lives or YouTube Lives, and they re-record those to repurpose on YouTube. That's fine. Um, but I wouldn't recommend you start with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would recommend you start with edited videos and start getting a fan base that way. Um, once you get a little more traction, then you can start doing that. But what I would recommend you do is like run that live video with like if it was a real video. So start off, you know, be, wait for people to show up. You know, there's always that first five minutes, like kind of like we did where we're just waiting for people to show up and we're just like, hey guys, uh, anyways, we're just going to wait around here. Like you want to cut that out for the actual video. Don't cut, you know, cut out all the, the useless stuff. And then once, a, and then in your live video, be like, okay guys, we have enough people here. We're going to start now. Hello everyone. And, and just start the whole process and, and then cut it from that point on and run it. Like if it was a real video, because um, people are not going to sit and watch a 20 to 40 minute video if they don't know who you are. Once they're a fan of yours, they'll sit down and watch a three hour podcast with yours, but you need to develop that fan base first. Great question though, Elizabeth. Uh, Kat, is there an ideal amount of time for a video? Um, no, there isn't. Uh, people think there's like a magic number, like, hey, four minutes, three minutes. The fact of the matter is, is YouTube is the next uh, way to consume entertainment and education. Um, and I don't want to sit here and show numbers, but it's literally in the billions and the millions of people that watch YouTube. So they'll sit and watch a 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute video um, if it's entertaining and it's or education and, and it provides value. So um, if you're scared and you don't feel like you want to talk for more than 10 minutes, then just do what you can and don't add extra content. Just <clears throat> say what's relevant. Once you're done, you're done. Once you're, once you're, uh, once you get ad revenue, then you have to be over 10 minutes to get more ads on there. But even at that point, if my video is only nine minutes long, I won't push it. I'll just say whatever is a value. And if I have nothing else to say, then I'll end it there. Great question, Kat. Nancy, last question. And then uh, we'll, we'll go to the next subject. But once again, guys, please leave your questions. I will come back and answer them. <clears throat> Nancy, I would like to start with YouTube instead of Facebook videos. Do you think that's a good that way? Um, hmm, it's a good question. I know Facebook video is starting to get popular. Um, I personally think, and this is just my opinion, I could be wrong. Um, Facebook video is, Facebook is just created for not the audience that I want to get, you know? I mean, you look at the, what's popular on Facebook videos and it's, you know, the videos with like font in the bottom and like very clickbaity videos of like, you'll never believe what happens, you know, or my baby mom, I did this to my baby mom or stuff like that. 
So I, I just, I, I'm not really agreeing with the platform and what they're pushing in their platform. So I think if someone who wants to create educational content, Facebook can be a good source. And there are people out there that get business out of there and they do way better than Facebook video than I do. But me personally, I, I, I resonate more with the audience on YouTube, which are like, you know, more saltier millennials like me. Um, but if you want to go that route and you're going through the more, you know, the, the, the 20 year old, 30 years, 40 year olds that stay at home more that are on Facebook longer, then that's definitely a good option to take. So I would say for you, I would create the videos and put them on both platforms and see what starts sticking and then stick with that. Wow. You answered my question. Yep. Nancy, I answered your question. So once again, I'll answer any questions. I do lives all the time, guys, and I'm, I can keep up with uh, 50 or 10 questions at a time. So you guys just let me know if you have any other questions. So we're going to go back to share now. Okay, there we go. Okay, so at this point, uh, once I have a video topic in mind, I understand my competition a little more and I have my subjects of what I want to talk about, I start recording, which is always the, this is where people get stuck. They don't want to start videos because they don't have the hardware, because they don't have the software. They don't know what to do. So I'm going to kind of briefly talk about what I've done in the past and what I've used and what I would do if I was in a situation where I didn't have it. So when I first started, you know how realtors are, you know, we get big checks at a time and we think we're ballers for a month and then it runs out. Um, so in one of those times where I thought I was a baller, I went out and I invested in the camera that I've lost. I invested about five to $600 in a G seven X Mark two, which is a, um, point and shoot point and shoot means that you don't change the lens or anything. You just hit a play, you hit a power and you start recording. Um, this is a, not to say the high end, the biggest high end uh, point and shoot, but it's like mid tier. I started with this. So I, I knew that I wanted higher quality shoot footage. I didn't want to do, um, footage that didn't look good because I, I'm, I'm personally a little anal about making sure it looks solid. So I started with something, you know, a little more secure, um, for, but then it's also very important that you guys just don't invest in video. What I did as well as I invested in audio with a cheap USB um, audio mic, which in this case, I think I used a blue snowball, which is only like 60, 70 bucks. It might be hard to find now because of the environment, but um, it's 60, 70 bucks. And then I eventually, there was also like a, a blue Yeti. It's a, it's a USB mic that connects to your laptop. Um, that's like 100, 120 bucks. So I had a $600 uh, camera and I had a, a, um, a uh, what's it called? A $100 mic. And with those two, I made probably about the first 30 or 40 percent and that 700 hundred dollar investment probably made me at least a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars so it's very important if you're going to do this you know don't go all out and buy a nice camera and lens right away start with something that looks solid and get the ball rolling with that now as i've upgraded and uh, people always ask this so i'll show you yay live live videos is what we get to see I've actually updated now um, about a year. Last year, I've I have updated to a uh, Sony A7 III. It's about a two thousand twenty two hundred dollar body, and I've invested into a G Master lens, which is about a fifteen hundred dollar uh, lens as well. So you, I mean, I thought the camera was expensive, but you can start spending thousands of dollars. And this isn't even like high end. This is like there's like five ten thousand dollar cameras and lens. So that's what I have now, and that's what I shoot with now. But I. This is, you know, this is nice now because I'm more of a YouTuber, but this is what originally created more funds for me. Now, with the audio and video, audio is just as important. It's probably even more important than uh, video. You can record on a webcam and have perfect audio with like a nice mic. People will watch your stuff because if you think about the opposite where people have better, um, you know, video and they look at like amazing cinematic feel, but their audio is like... <laughs> that people are not going to watch that. They're going to walk away. They're not just going to stare at you. You're not that handsome, right? So for, for the camera and audio, I would rather have a better uh, a microphone than I would have a better camera. So what I would recommend you all do is go buy a, uh, one of those tripods that holds for a phone. If you have a nice phone, especially the, like the iPhones with the three lens or the galaxies that are nicer, use that. That's going to be that. This phone has better video than this camera. If you don't have a nice phone or you don't want to use your phone, then go and invest into a $500, maybe $1,600 point and shoot or a video a camera I had before this one is a, um, a, I think it was a Canon SL2 
or use any of the other cannons that are that are used that have video um what's the word uh when it focuses a uh, autofocus for video which i believe are t6i t7i um I, i'm sure there's a list out there uh, if you can feel free to send me a message if you want to make sure to confirm that it would has it but anything that has auto like automatic autofocus for video um, because if you get a camera that doesn't have autofocus you start recording it'll lose focus halfway through and you'll have a, a shot with like you out of focus so something that that'll probably cost you maybe three to six hundred bucks if you want to do a, a, a nice like a, a, a body and then you, you can slowly upgrade your lens as well as time goes by so that's the equipment that i use now for my, my camera i'm sorry for my mic i've actually upgraded to like a rode mic which you're listening to right now i have a a scarlet um where my audio goes in from there and then goes to my computer but once again i, I know i'm more established so that you don't need this fancy stuff you'll be fine from with the USB mic. So I would rather you have like the improvement of camera audio is like a camera audio is like a two or three out of 10. If you improve to a USB mic for a hundred bucks, you go from a two or three to like a seven, right? Now this nice fancy mic in the system is only like a nine. It's only like two more points of extra quality. I would rather you be at a seven and stay at a seven for a long time then stick with that two camera audio because camera audios can be pretty bad. And I don't recommend you guys get the camera that's attaches the, the, sorry, the mic that attaches to your camera because when people watch your video, they want to feel like they're there with you and they want to hear that. Like literally I'm here talking to the mic. You're here. You can feel me. You can feel the bass in my voice. And, or at least I wish I had more bass in my voice. I don't have that much. Um, it's just more personal. If the, if the, if the mic is further away, it's not very clear. It's not very crisp. It just, I personally don't prefer that. So anyways, what I do is I hit record. I, I set up the shot. Um, the shot's important. Um, I've been actually shooting my videos here behind this. So, um, you know, just have entertaining things, not necessarily that catch too much attention, but have uh, the videos I had in my office before, uh, where I have my cell at my office. I just haven't been there. Um, I have like things that are that I love doing. Like I'm a big nerd, so I like Dungeons and Dragons and video games and movies, props and whatnot. So I have Star Wars stuff and video game stuff and D and D stuff in the back. And that's just because that's my personality. And if you're afraid to show off your personality, um, I have had people tell me. Uh, one person in my career tell me, uh, if you want to be taken seriously, you should take those toys off your back. But that's one person. Everyone else who is actually wanting to work with me. That's why they want to work. Well, we're one of the reasons because they, you know, it's a little more personable. I don't recommend you go all hustle muscle. So, uh, like, and have like real estate sales books in the back. That's just you know, like, what are you trying to do? Prove that you're, you're a real estate agent. Like we already know that. Um, I like to let my, let the hidden meaning not the hidden meaning, rather the, the unspoken things, you know, speak for themselves when I make a video. I don't say, hey guys, I'm a realtor with Realty One Group, with my home group, with, you know, I'm a real estate agent, real estate agent, real estate agent. No. It's like, hey guys, I'm Javier, real estate guy, blah, blah, blah. And, and as I'm talking, I don't never say I'm a realtor till the very end when I give my, um, if you happen to you know, be a real estate agent, you know. But people are smart. They can figure out you're a realtor. You don't need books in the back saying, hey, I'm a realtor. Come to hire me. Okay. So I shoot the video. I hit record on the video. And I hit record on my camera. Set. So if you're on a computer, you would have your USB mic set. You hit a record on your audio. And then you have your camera. You hit record on your video. This is a big secret of movies. You guys think that they shoot audio and video at the same time. They don't. They have boom mics that are recording. They have, um, sometimes they just shoot. And then after the fact, they'll have the actors come in and be like, make grunts as they're walking and stuff like that. Or the sound effects, they'll put them in after the fact. You know, video and audio are rarely recorded together. So just for, if that surprises you, that's, that's the truth. So hit audio, record separately, video record separately. I get, I get set up, make sure I'm not sweating because I'm a sweater. And I always do like a first three claps to make sure I'm synced and you'll, you'll see why I do that later. So once I've started that, then I just start talking. Um, uh, so basically some tips when you're talking is you're going to be nervous in front of the camera for the first dozen videos. You need to figure out your personality and that's fine. Um, for me, I'm, I'm really crazy and I, I always like being in front of the camera. So I, it was kind of more natural to me. But if you watch those first videos of mine, I'm still kind of like, you know, stiff and whatnot. You know, the first 10 videos are, you're, are not going to be so great. That's fine. Just do them, post them. And eventually, once you've done 10 to 20 videos, you're going to know a little more about your style and how you like to talk. So one thing, though, is what I recommend is when you're talking, let's say you're in the middle of a point like, hey, um, 
uh, let's, I don't know, the, the sky is blue and the rocks are, and you forget where rocks are, don't be like, what are the rocks? What are the rocks? Okay, yeah, the rocks are red. Well, what happens now is when you cut all that out, you're gonna, this gonna look like this. Hi, the sky is blue and the rocks are red. Like it's not gonna make sense because you're moved to the side. So what I do when I chat is like, hi, the name's Javier. So anyways, the sky is blue. I freeze and I don't move while I think. And then I say, and the rocks are red. So what happens is when I edit that together, it'll be like, hi, the Javier, the sky is blue and the rocks are red. Like it's, you're gonna see a cut, but you're not gonna see it that serious. Other than that, uh, really can't really give much other tips other than just start showing you guys. So um, now I'm going to show you guys what I use for software and how I edit a video. Before we do that, I'm going to answer some questions. So we'll do that now. Uh, Susan, I'm new to this. Do you go into YouTube first and then start the video or record first? You don't record on youtube.com. Uh, you'd create your video and then you upload it to YouTube. Um, unless you want to go live, then you can record, you can start on YouTube and then we could go there. Um, Jorge, I wanted to make Spanish and English videos. You think it'd be a good idea to post on the same channel. You know what, Jorge, if you're known to make videos in Spanish and English, that's, that's totally the vibe you can go with. Um, personally, I would create, I would create content. Um, I would be a little more specific. Here's why. When I've been, I've been asked by people like, hey, you should make videos in Spanish. I speak Spanish. I don't know if you can tell by my name being Javier or not. So I won't, wouldn't do that though because I've already created my fan base and my, my group of people that like me that know, don't know me as a Spanish speaker who makes videos for Spanish speakers. So I don't want to alienate my core base and, and with the, for the potential of getting more people in there. I would rather create my base to be stronger um, and keep that going and then, you know, I think people can read between the lines, my name being Javier, that I speak Spanish. So once again, it's that thing, right? So if you want to start making videos and you maybe drop once in a while, like a Spanish saying or a Spanish phrase, or, you know, in your, in your intro, or you might say, hi, my name's Jorge. I'm the real estate agent in whatever uh, city you're in. Um, and, and by the way, hablo español. Anyways, let's get to it. Just to drop that, I would rather drop those hints because I don't think Spanish speakers are as prevalent on YouTube, especially, or maybe they might be but I would rather focus on one group rather than trying to get multiple groups at once. But great question. Um, Elizabeth, can you please post some uh, follow-up uh, recommendations for purchases for beginners now? Also, what's the best holder if you're using a phone? I can recommend them, but honestly what I'll do is I'll make them an Amazon affiliate links <laughs> and I don't wanna do that to you. So what I'll do is I'll just say, um, go on Amazon and just look up stands and whatever you find there's going to work. You do, there's not a specific brand that'll be better than others. Um, for purchases, I can make a link that I don't know if Kelly's here or not, but I can make a link where we can send them after that way. Um, we can, you know, you guys have different recommendations. Uh, I don't know, Kelly's, are you taking a nap Kelly? Oh well, yeah, we'll do that. Um, hey, I'm right here, silly. I know. Okay. Just we're trying to call you out. Why is your video off then if you're not there? And I'm just kidding. Uh, Victor, uh, thanks, brother. I have to go show homes. Okay, let's take a hope, hope you have some good showings. Uh, Elizabeth, where are you looking? I find because I'm looking at my face, it seems to be under where the camera. Um, so when you're shooting a video, you want to look at the lens. The lens is the glass. So in this case, it would be right here. Um, and then sometimes it's hard because if you have a camera that has a screen that pops up, you can actually, you see yourself and you want to look at yourself. But what happens just like right now, you can see me you're not talking at the person, you're talking at the screen. So always look directly in the lens. You should see your reflection in the lens and that's what you look at. Um, okay, uh, Hassan, hi Javier. How, how have you found YouTube to be for generating seller listing leads versus buyer leads? So I, had, I know someone out of um, Virg uh, Arlington, Virginia, his name's Matt Lane who kills it for listings. And he actually uses his YouTube channel to leverage not only the listings he gets, but like actually promote them. So he's doing great. I, because like I kind of told Jorge, I focus on buyers and I've, I've tried to even say, you know what, I'm gonna start making videos for sellers and they don't do really great. So at this point I've already kind of, not gonna say the negative is dug my own grave, but you know, you get the gist. I've already figured out this is what I'm good at. So that's what I good at. So I'm sure if you start making videos for sellers and you start attracting that you can get it. Um, unfortunately, in my case, I wouldn't be able to comment on that because I've already kind of became the buyer guy and that's what I primarily do. But I'd be interested in seeing that. I'm sure it's, it's possible. Okay. 
Um, 24 participants. Wow. It just it feels like I'm in a tank and everyone's just staring at me right now. All right, let's go back to share the screen where I'll now show you some of my video editing techniques. Oh, we have one last question. Susan, we are. Okay. All right, share computer sound. Okay, boom. Okay, guys, so you're going to be hearing some footage uh, playing as we go. So I just want to kind of show you what I'm doing. So for my, for when I record audio, I use GarageBand. So I just hit record on GarageBand. If, um, if you have a Mac, I believe you can use QuickTime Player as well. And then uh, I think for, for Windows, there's free software called, uh, shoot, I don't remember the name of it, but there's free software you can download or you can record. So I have my audio separate to well, my actual video files, just like I showed you earlier. So I have the audio there or not. What I do is I save it as a separate file, which I've already done here. And then I open up my video editing software. So I have a Mac, so I use Final Cut Pro. That's like a three to $500 investment. But when I started this, I said, I want to learn something that I can use now and I can use when I'm really good because I wasn't good when I started. So if you, you can share that sentiment with me and invest into nicer uh, software that's going to take you longer to learn like a uh, Final Cut Pro or like um, I think Premiere Pro is great for, for a PC. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you could definitely use other equipment. However, whatever you, software you do decide to use, make sure you have the capability of having different layers. So for example, I have this, let me show you an actual video that's been created. So there's Elizabeth Hofer there. For those who need a lender, reach out to her. Sammy's supposed to be here representing her, but she's probably taking a nap right now. So, there's like you have video software that has different layers on top of it. So you have audio layer, you have video layer, you can have different stuff on top of it. Your basic stuff that only costs 10, 20 bucks or that comes free with your computer will not have the capability of having several layers. So if you're going to do it and you're not going to hire someone, I would recommend you just spend a little money. We're realtors. You get a good checks at a time. Just buy, you know, a decent software that'll work. Um, I was running uh, my creating videos on my MacBook Air, which is a very starter MacBook. And my MacBook would run hot and be very loud, but it would be possible. So you don't need a massive computer. If you're going on PC, I recommend something that has, um, I think, I don't know if it's updated no more, but like an i5 or an i7 processing, that way you can handle it. Um, or or uh, an actual desktop computer, that'd be good too. But anyways, yeah, have something at software that's different layers. I prefer Final Cut Pro because I can use this uh, to make a movie or I can make this to do a video about my kids. So I, I just like having that power. Premiere Pro is hard to learn, but you'll have that power with them too. So in this case, I'm not going to show you how to use this software because I don't know what software you're using, but the concepts that this software has will be relevant to whatever software you're using. Blading, um, editing, you know, squeezing audio, all that stuff you can do with any software. So um, you just have to learn what shortcuts they are for whatever software. So in this case, um, what I do is I upload my video onto Final Cut Pro and I upload my audio into Final Cut Pro, okay? So at this point, I have my video here. Like obviously there's that weird shot of me looking at the computer, that's not very uh, good. And then what I do is I move my audio on there too. So there's gonna be my video and my audio, which right now they're not synced up. So what I do, I'm sure this is the right audio. Yeah. Those, remember those claps I showed you guys earlier? That's where they come relevant. So well, I'm, I'm gonna start doing things. So when you have two timelines now, when you have your timeline set, you wanna start um, working with things a little more. And that's why I recommend you having better software because you can't do this with the starter stuff. So the main thing that you want to use is blading. Um, blading is, I, th I, I believe it's because when they used to make videos, you know, you know in the old days, um, they would literally have clips or like footage and they would blade it with the blade and then take parts of them that they didn't want and they would put the certain footage that they wanted together. So in Final Cut Pro, blading can be accessed through here and then hit blade. Or one thing I do is I know the shortcuts I, with my keyboard and I just hit blade. So what I'm doing here is I want this to come over here. So I'm going to hit, hit blade here. And now there's two separate clips here. There's this one and there's this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit delete, take that one completely off, and now I have the capability of moving this around. So um, what I'm going to do is those three claps that I did, I 
find where I did it, looking at the count twos. So here I see that I did it over here. Let me get close there. And I start lining them up. This doesn't have to be perfect. But if it's long around the same, around the same, it should be good. So start kind of line up the mountains and see where it goes up around the same time and see if it's the same. Let's... Perfect. So I've at this point now what I've done is I've synced my video and my audio. So for you guys, just so you guys know, this video that we're shooting, I actually have a for my for my YouTube subscribers. I, I'm going to be selling an ebook e um, for you know that, to help people buy homes and whatnot. So. Um, this is going to be a video course that's going to be as an add-on to my ebook. So this is what I'm editing now. So that way you get an idea of what I'm shooting. It's not just a video for YouTube. So anyway, so at this point, the first thing we got to do is we got to sync the video and the audio. So we're syncing the video um, that's combined with the audio and we're syncing the audio that we recorded separately. Make sure that it's about the same. First and foremost, I'm going to do a check. Can you guys hear the computer? I'm going to stop the share. I want to make sure you guys send me a message. Can you guys hear the computer? Let me know yes or no. Okay, perfect. Perfect, okay. So we're going back there. Can you imagine if I did the whole class and they can't even hear anything? That'd be terrible. Okay, so now that they're synced, I want you guys to check this out. Hello guys and welcome to... So, I'm gonna detach the audio from the original video so that way you can see both of the qualities of audios. So detach audio. Here we see the audio that, that the camera recorded and the audio that I recorded separately. So you, that you, you guys can hear the difference now of what each audio does. So this is the camera audio you're hearing now. Hello guys and welcome to the Home Goal Helper Virtual Close Virtual. Okay. Now, check out the one that I recorded separately. Hello guys and welcome to the Home Goal Helper Virtual Close Virtual. Huge difference. This is why I'm telling you, if you're not going to invest in a camera, invest in a mic. Whatever USB mic or one that connects, whatever is fine. Um, and then when I look at the audio, I want to make sure that I have those hills, not too much, not red, like that would be bad. Um, so let me look at the audio. So I don't want red and yellow. So I want like some yellow, not too much red, like that. So in that case... There. Hello guys and welcome to the Home Goal Helper Virtual Close Virtual. Okay. There it is. So, Hello guys and welcome. Once I have the video and the audio sync like I did earlier, I detach the audio from the camera video, I delete the camera audio, and I combine the video and the video without sound and the audio that I've synced with the one I recorded separately. And what you get is Hello guys and welcome to the Home Goal Helper Virtual Coast. For okay, now you get is the video exactly how you want it. Oh, it's not exactly how I want it. I look bigger than I want to there, unfortunately. Those coronavirus, those, um, what do they call them? The quarantine pounds. So it looked, the video and the audio is exactly how I want it. And then uh, now I can start editing the entire video. So that's how we combine video and audio. From this point on, whatever, however your video comes out, that's up to you and how you edit but you're, you wanna make sure your video is quality and your audio is quality. And once you have both of those, you're able to combine them together. That way you have a good product. You don't need fancy cameras. You, need, you don't need fancy mics. You just need the basic stuff. And as long as you're doing them separately and you combine them, you should be able to do that. Alrighty. I'm gonna, before I teach you guys how to edit and how to blade, I'm gonna go back and answer some questions if you guys have them now. Okay, no questions. That's fine. I'll give you guys a minute if you guys have any questions. Um, if not, we'll go straight to the editing. I lost three people, three participants. Dang, it must be boring. Uh, what kind of camera do you use? Colin, I use a, a Sony A7 III with a, a G Master 1.4 24mm lens. Um, but I don't recommend you get something this expensive to start off. You can start off with your phone and a decent mic. My mic is a Rode, I don't know what kind of mic it is, it's a Rode mic, and I have a Scarlett 212 uh, audio processor that goes into my computer. Uh, Elizabeth, just way over me, I need a manual. So yeah, hopefully, I mean, this is just to help you guys get an idea, but 
once you have the software and you have the, all that stuff, then you start learning by doing. And there's nothing wrong with hiring a video editor to do this, but um, you're, you're not going to ever, I mean, if you want to learn, just download it and start messing around with it and you'll start getting a better idea. Uh, Nancy Binder, do you make videos for other agents? I do not. No, I do not. Um, I, my videos take a lot of time, you know, for me as it is. So I wouldn't do that. However, I do want to plug, um, there's Rensler Media. If you guys want to follow Skylar Irvine um, on Instagram, I think he's at Skylar. I have to double check. I'll tag him right now. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I'll tag him right now. But he actually has packages for people where he'll edit or he'll, he'll create videos for you and whatnot. He has his own video creation company. So um, if you go to, let's see. Yeah, if you guys follow me on my Instagram, which is the Javier Vidanya, I'll make a story right now and I'll tag him. That way you know who it is. I'll make a quick story. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, just send me a DM and I'll send you if you want his info. But yeah, that, there's people out there that will make the videos for you if you need to. But anyways, now we're going to work, let's start with the editing process. I'm sorry, how we had some other questions. Colin, for everyone, iMovie is a great program to use for starters. Just a suggestion. Colin, I don't know if you were here before, but I, I specifically said that if you're going to do it this way, I don't think you can do like audio and video separately on, on iMovie. So I would recommend if, you know, a lot of people here are probably realtors. So um, even if there's no income, incoming deals right now, there will be in the future. Uh, with a check, I would recommend you buy a starter two or $300 software. That way you have the capability of having different video audio and like syncing audios and all of that stuff. If you don't want to get this fancy, yes, you can just shoot video and audio from your camera and edit that. But this is like for people like who want to, you know, take their video and audio to the next level, if that makes sense. Patrick, do you upload directly to YouTube or download videos on files and upload? Great question, Patrick. What I do actually is I, um, create the video. I, I download it on my hard drive in case I ever need to use it again. And then I upload it to YouTube from there. I also feel like um, the software, when it uploads directly to YouTube, which some softwares do do that, you lose quality there. So I like to just do that so I can keep a copy. A very great question. Um, okay. So let's now go to desktop. Here we go. Now I'm gonna do just some quick tips about how I actually edit. So you guys can get an idea. So I don't know, I have no idea what I said. I hopefully I didn't say anything too bad or I picked my nose. That would not be good. <laughs> so I always find out where I start talking and I just blade that and have that be the beginning of my video. So hello everyone and welcome to the home. Okay, so that's where I start off. You don't wanna to start too soon. Like if you cut too soon, then you do this. Hello everyone and welcome Hello everyone. And I mean, I guess as you can still hear hello, but you don't want that. And what I see some people do as well is they cut it too soon and you have that weird pause. Hello everyone and welcome to the Home Goal Helper v v Virtual. You don't want that hello weird everyone. pause right before hello you start. So you want to blade right where the audio starts going up. Cut that out. And hello everyone and welcome to the Home Goal Helper. So as, now to edit, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm literally, I'm just going to do it for a bit where I'm just listening and seeing. I'm listening and I'm watching the mountains of the sound and how they go up. Um, I'm looking for consistent patterns. So when I do have a stop, I try to cut. And, and if I cut it, it's going to be a, a nice pattern to keep up and down. Which you'll see now. Let me just start doing it. And welcome to the Home Goal Helper virtual course of videos where I'm going to personally walk you through each chapter, each worksheet to hopefully help you get a better understanding of what you're filling out and active. So if you haven't printed it out or you don't have it in a, you should do that before you start this video because if you're just going to read through I, and kind of actually able to, to edit it, I might have done a good video where I didn't have that much time to edit. On the other line, what kind of house are you looking for? Because personally, when I purchase homes, you know, I do focus there. Okay. Personal. So really guys, creating your video is just about cutting the stops. And as you do more videos, you're going to learn how to do it better where it doesn't look that bad. My first videos, I'm like, you know, doing my stops and or my cuts and I'm just like here and then I'm over there and I'm just skipping all over the place. So how I do it, a stop is like, I just, so yeah. Once again, I told you guys I'm looking for consistent hills and mountains so while I'm editing. So if I have a certain spot there where I know I want to cut it, I'll just kind of listen to it again. Personally, when I purchase homes, you know, I do focus on added unnecessary word of saying, you know, and I, I was swallowing spit or I don't know what I was doing. So I'll cut it right before I stop. 
I never want to cut it in between because there's some words that you say like uh, when you say houses, like uh, on the mountain, it'll 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 go like that and it'll stay low. But the low is really important because that's the S, right? If you don't, if you cut the S out, then you're just saying house. So I always want to make sure to stop where wherever there's no more sound. I go to where I want to cut it next. So once again, probably where the sound starts. And now what I've done is I bladed those two spots and really didn't cut it yet. It's still there. You know, but once I do it's bladed out, you can select it and you can delete it. So this is the end result. Purchase homes. I do focus on that stuff eventually. So once again, that remember that S I talked about. Purchase homes. I do I don't like purchase homes. Kind of abruptly stop. So I'm gonna just purchase homes. I do focus on that. Homes. I just, so I'll keep it a little longer. So that's basically how that cut is. So clearly purchase homes. I do focus. See, I didn't do a good job there because when I said purchase homes, I looked down. So if there is any pauses, you want to keep looking at the camera. That way it looks more consistent rather than, you know, it looks like you're all over this place. Um, eventually, but I want to really get the big picture here. You know, what is this? Yeah, once again, there's another one here. So do it here, do it here, cut it. Boom. I do focus on that stuff eventually, but I want to really that's get... That's what you start doing. You start cutting certain spots and you start figuring it out as you go. So I'm, really I'm at the very end, at the beginning. Um, Oh, here's a good spot here. Because it's known for its uh, west. A lot of you know. Um, a lot of you know. I've mentioned my videos before. So obviously, there I don't know what was going on in my head. But it's okay to do these when you're recording. You know, you're like you mess up and you're just like, oh gosh, let me just start that idea over. So I, let me see what I was saying before. <laughs> because it's known for its uh, west. A lot of you know. Um, to make it to a certain city in Phoenix, Arizona, because a city in a certain city in Fe to make yeah, so I don't know what and I when we got together, one of our home goals was to be in a certain city in a certain city in Phoenix. Yeah, so I, I probably don't my, the whole idea. So uh, I would stop where I where the last coherent word I said. Me, well, not you all, but a lot of you guys know by now that goals. You all oh, home goals and then well, maybe well, not life. you all, but a lot so, of you guys know by now when we got together. Together. One of our home goals was to be in a certain city in a certain city in Fe <laughs> to so make it to a, a lot of you, you know, um, a lot of you know, I've mentioned my videos before. So all that's unnecessary, I'm picking my nose, I don't like it. So I've already bladed where it started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all that out. And now it should be a little more coherent. What does this house mean in my overall home goals? I've mentioned my videos before that so my- You can't even tell that I was blumbling like an idiot there for like a minute. So overall home goals. I've mentioned my videos. And you just do that throughout the whole video. This, this I, I've actually grown to enjoy this part. Um, if you don't like doing this, you eventually will. It's, it's really tedious. And if you don't know the shortcuts, like you guys can see me, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out. It's really just about learning your software, learning the blade. The main ones I use is zoom blade. Um, and then hand when I want to start moving stuff around. That's only the only ones you need to know. You don't need to know anything else that's fancy. Um, I do occasionally get the question of like, uh, what we know when I have like video font that pops up in the video, how do I do that? Well, I've actually, I'm not, I know, I've found a shortcut around that. I actually just purchased them online. There's certain websites out there like for Final Cut Pro or for like Premiere Pro that sell pre-made fonts like these already. You buy them for like 10, 15 bucks and then you download on Final Cut Pro. So whatever font they decided to use, I just really just drag it in there. For virtual course of video. It pops up and you just go in there and you uh, make this one the way it works is you can change the words. There, boom. So you just kind of change the words around. Course of videos where of I'm- Of course, now I've made so many videos that I, I have certain um, ones that I've used over and over again, like these ones I believe. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another real estate video. This is Javier Vidania, the real estate. I'll just copy these ones I use and I'll just paste them onto the new video. But if you want to use those words, I'm sure your software will come with some basic ones, but just invest another five or $10 if you want nicer ones, or I'm sure there's free ones out there as well. Um, but the basic ones, I mean, they work. I, I use them for my first few videos where just like words will pop up. An officer of the country. <laughs> that may be not the 3D one. But yeah there's certain ones that you could work and put in there so really when it comes to editing it's blading it's moving the videos around um it's about adding certain features like that that makes it a little different uh the music just download something online that's uh royalty free 
first. And that's why it's important to not use the basic software because I don't think you can, you can add different like, sound, but you can't cut it and blade it and be very specific with it. So in my case, I have an, uh, a song made by a good friend of mine, Amir, um, who just like made a fi and I just have it in the back, low volume. Market in the videos. Maricopa Phoenix, Arizona. I put the audio or the song after I created blading the video up. That way I can um, have it in the background and, 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 and while it's playing. So once I, I go to the video, and as you can see there, there is a lot of this is a video I made about a market update that I made with my good friend Lizzie. Um, so once I'm done editing it, what I'll do is I'll start watching the video again to see if I find any other little mistakes. And then um, really that's it. It's not, I mean, it's, it seems very tedious at first, but once you learn the blading and the shortcuts, you kind of just get a groove for it and it'll take you maybe an hour or two to edit, but you'll start being, in, people know when you're in control of your video when it's your baby. When you, when you hire it off to somebody else, they can kind of lose that charm a bit, but I believe you do, sh you should learn your first few videos and do it on your own. That way you can figure out your style. So that was really technical. Um, I probably missed a lot of stuff. So I'm going to let you guys ask any questions now, and then I'll show you how I do a thumbnail and end the video really fast because I think we only have five minutes left. So I'm going to stop the share now, and I'm going to see any questions you have. Elizabeth, do you find, do you find that when you edit out, the words don't match the sound anymore? What do you, what do you mean by that, Elizabeth, when you edit what out? When I edit out the word, do you find that when you edit out the words don't match in the sound anymore, your mouth doesn't match what's on the screen? Um, if you see that with my video right now, it's because maybe the lag, but um, yeah, you know, that usually doesn't happen as long as you're able to sync it up perfectly. That way it'll come out. But um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that, even if it's not perfect, where if you, you open your mouth right before your sound comes out, I think at the end of the day, um, you'll get better. And even if you make, I mean, I've made mistakes in my videos where the sounds a little off or something, but you know, it's just a matter of making it and then putting it out there and then learning from it and keeping going. Um, but I mean, it happens occasionally, but you just want to make sure you sync it up perfectly. That way it doesn't happen. Does anyone else have any other questions about editing? Well, Mike Lulon with the, with the gas mask, that's kind of spooky. Do you use anything for lighting? Um, I am a big fan of natural lighting. If you can see here, that's my house, my, my lights. Um, but recently because of this whole pandemic and the Zoom calls I've been doing, um, I actually did invest into some desk lights. They're like these little desk lights you have here. Um, they, I don't know if they really add too much. Like for example, let me show you guys with and without the lights so you can see the difference. This is with lights. This is without lights. So that's what I use now for my desk setup. But primarily, I didn't really use it for um, that. So I'm, I think we lost someone. Good question, though, Colin. Okay, now really quick, I'm going to show you guys how I edit a thumbnail. And it's not super hard, um, but we'll see it now. So for my thumbnails, what I usually like to do, and I think you can see it here. So embarrassing. <laughs> but I... Um, Bef when I shoot, when I start the video, I sync it up. Oh, well, uh, I, even, I need to share it. Sorry, I didn't even share it. I say, boom. So you'll see this in the video I've already had edited. So I always start off the video clapping, one, two, three. And then I wipe off sweat, just like I said, I would get sweaty. And I start posing. So why do I start posing? Because um, my original, my first five or 10 videos, I would actually find a like, clip where I'm talking. And then I would take that as a screenshot and use that for my thumbnail. But why, by, by posing, um, let's just say I decided to go with that one. Oh, oh, we'll go with that one. That's fine. I'm actually able to pick out a good photo that I like that I could use that as my thumbnail. So in this case, let's say I want to go serious here. I'll do this one. I'll use the same software to, to save it as a current frame. Now, it's important that you take it as a current frame because right now the size of this photo is perfect. Um, if you try to get a photo that's not like from like a separate photo from an actual camera or something, the sizing is going to be off for YouTube and it's not going to accept it. So I would rather get a screenshot from my video so that way I can uh, have it be already pretty good. So for the editing software, you could use uh, Photoshop. You can use any of those fancy ones. I actually 
Spence, you know, I told you Final Cut Pro, I invested in myself and everything. Well, I, I'm not a fan of, of a Photoshop, how you'd have to pay like a really expensive price to get it, or you have to pay a monthly fee to rent it. So, excuse me. So what I did is I, um, I bought a, a kind of like a wannabe Photoshop. The program I use is called Pixelator. It's like 30 or 40 bucks on the Mac store. And that's what I've just kind of grown to use. And that's what I use now. So what I'll do is I'll get the, let's see, the, the screenshot that I got and I'll use Pixelator to edit it out. So boom, there's my pretty face. Um, really quickly, you need a Photoshop, you need a, a software like this. I think there's free ones online like pixlr.com, I believe. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, show you guys what I do. So there's my tools, there's my layers. So I create a duplicate layer. So I have two different copies. And the first thing I do is I take out the background of one, of one thing. So using Photoshop, um, I think they have the same exact thing. Um, in this case, I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm gonna take out my back area. Well, if, it's, uh, if I have the right color on, this will be really easy. Sometimes I decide to wear a gray or brown that matches my background and it makes it really difficult. And since I decided to shave my head too, it's been very easier, very much easier. As you can tell, I've tried to cut it myself. It's not very even. And I get a general sense of that. Boom. Okay. So now that I've cut that out, I add back the other layer and you can't even tell, but there's two layers. There's the back layer and there's a front layer, right? My personal style is I like having the background blurry and a different color. So what I'm going to do is for the background layer is I'll go and I'll make it just a tad more blurry. And if you guys think I'm like, wow, look at this guy's amazing at what he's doing. Don't be fooled. Okay. The secret is anytime I wanted to learn something, I Google it. So in this case, I'd Google Pixelmator, how to make blurry. And I found out. And it's just, I am just a collection of previous Google searches. Do not be impressed by my skills. I'm trying to, there you go. So now I make the background blurry. So I don't want it too blurry, but you see, as you can tell, I'm still in focus because there's two layers. There's me and there's the background. And then what I do as well is I add a box. Uh, whatever color I want to go with. So let's see, go with, uh, we'll go like an orange or not. Nah, we'll go with the red, put the red in the back and then I'll make it so it blurs out. That way it just has a hint of red. Um, nothing too crazy, but there's a hint of red there. So difference, this was before, this was after. Um, and then for, oh, I like to have on my thumbnails is like big words about the, so in this case, it's called uh, May uh, market update. And a lot of how keywords that people are really interested in right now are market crash or is the market housing going to be okay? So I might put here in, in giant words. let's just put market update 2020. I'll word this, make this be very big. Kind of put it somewhere there and sometimes it doesn't blend in. So what I do is I just put another box, whatever color I think works. So I think right there, a nice color that would work is like a brown. make it behind that layer and there's something like that. And that's what I'll use for my thumbnail. I always make it separate. You always want to make it different, consistent with your style that you're doing at that point. But you just also to kind of summarize, you get a key, you, you take out a screenshot, you, you create the layers and then you just add certain touches you want. If you want to be silly, you can you know, add different, um, go to Google, you, you look up like, a, I don't know, clip art or, or whatever, let's say house, Go to Google and you look up anything with PNG. That way it's an invisible background. You can uh, literally just copy it, add it to your thing. 
and then just like if you want to be like that just add something in the back put it there or something yeah, i don't know actually i might keep that something like that right so as long as it's a png it'll be invisible and that's that that's how i do my thumbnail and what I've done, guys, is I'm not much more handsome or smarter or intelligent than most people. I've just done this consistently every week. Every week, without fail, except those last two weeks, I, I make a video. And it's been, been consistent enough and the style's been good where people have got a little following and I've just kept doing it. And I feel like a lot of realtors start and they just stop and they never give them the chance to get going. So this is where we're going to end, guys. Um, I, I hope you guys were able to learn something. I'm going to open up a little more for like questions and whatnot. Um, and then uh, I want to thank Kelly for being amazing. Um, if you guys are in my home group agents, definitely reach out to her if you're interested. We're really amazing here. And of course, um, Sammy, who is not here right now, but I'll also I'll plug Lizzie for her. Um, if you guys are looking for a lender, Cross Country Mortgage, Lizzie Ho, for not only, not only the lender I recommend, but the lender I trust with my finances in my life. So she's really, she's done deals for me that, that just, she just makes things happen. I don't know what else to say about her, but if you guys are interested, please check them out. Um, now we'll answer any questions you guys might have. Can I unmute people now? Um, uh, I don't know if you're here anymore. Kelly, can I, can I unmute people or only you can do that? Uh, I think only I can. You want me to unmute everybody? Um, yeah, because that way I can answer. I mean, maybe somebody can have any yeah. questions. Yeah, I have the opposite problem for most people. Oh boy, I should have unmuted everyone. But, you know, to Hi me, everyone. Renovation is, is fun. Not not Someone's talking on the phone right now. <laughs> yeah. No, How about... Um, um, <laughs> can you mute everybody? Yeah, I should mute everyone back. <laughs> yes, please do that. <laughs> Hold on, let's let's actually listen to this deal. Let's see what they do. No, I'm just kidding. Don't mute everyone. Okay. Um, yeah. A chance, if you guys want to raise your hand, I believe there's a chance you can raise your hand or you can, no, literally, if you click your screen, uh, then there's like three little buttons. You can, oh, hold on. There's a way to raise your hand. I don't remember how. Or just um, where is it? It might be under the chat. It's too hard. I think that, I don't know, just unmute yourself and yeah. I think, I think we can unmute ourselves. Okay, perfect. Colin, yeah. question. Go ahead. Uh, I don't have a question. I was just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> unmute unmute Thanks, yourself Colin. if you have a question. Okay, so I have a question. What's up? Um, um, thank you for this. This is really great information. It's like so far over my head right now as far as you know, putting together these two things. So, but I do know that I feel comfortable recording. Um, you gave me a good, like, I'm gonna have to get away from the habit of looking at myself on the screen, which you gave the good tip about. Mm -hmm. And if I'm using my computer or something, like looking into the image and not at my face. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, would you suggest for starting then, um, use the video that we recorded if we don't yet feel comfortable with synthesizing and then work on creating that freeze thumbnail image? I am a big fan of putting up your bad videos up because you have to learn by doing. Um, and people, you get in this habit of creating some, like shooting a video and you don't like it and you just scrap it. Um, I would go with the entire process of, if you don't think you, if you don't think you like it, um, then it's probably just in your head and then just record it, do the synthesizing, do the thumbnail, post it on, on YouTube. Well, you don't have to post it, but just create the video. And if you want to post it, that's fine. Put it away, but you have to create videos in order to get better. So your first 10 videos are going to be bad. Um, so you just have to, you have to learn by doing. I mean, I think Ed Sheeran, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ed Sheeran. He, he said it, he made a crappy song every day until they stopped being crappy. That's all it is, is just repetition over and over and over until you get to the point where your videos are somewhat getting better. Your video that's going to be popular, like that one that you saw where it has 300,000 views, that was not my first video I ever made. That was probably like my hundredth. Um, but there's just already an amount of experience that hit the right time that made it work for me. So I would recommend you do the whole entire video, do everything. Um, and if you're too scared to post it, don't post it. But if you do, then just post it and see what happens. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question, Elizabeth. Thank you for participating. Um, anyone else? Yeah, yes. I, I got Patrick. Question. So I started, I've been doing videos, but now my question is more about, uh, do you find that certain thumbnails get more impressions on what you put on it, how much, how less? And then also, do you use like a lot of tags? How do you pick out your tags to get more views? So f regarding your um, question on the first one, 
the thumbnails that do better for me are the ones where my title is professional and my clickbait is on the thumbnail. So in this example, where I did, I'm doing a video about a market update. I'll make my video, my kids want to make an impression. So uh, I'll make the first uh, video, like uh, I'll make the top content of the video of my market update 2020, right? But on the thumbnail, I'll put like, is the market going to crash or something more serious? So those are the ones because people usually look at the thumbnail first and then they look at the title. So if I can get their attention initially with the, the thumbnail, then I can have them look at my title. And if I'm lucky, have them click my video. So not a specific style, but what you say, like the big words that pop up there is what works better for me. Um, your second question regarding, what was your second question again? Uh, about tags. Like, okay. So for tags, there's no, I would probably, I probably use the same tags that you would use. Um, uh, so for example, if I make a video about first time home buyers, I would put first time home buyers, down payment assistance, Javier Vidania, real estate, uh, Phoenix real estate realtors. So I, I do the same tags that you probably would use. Um, I just make them, make them more what people are looking up and searching, not necessarily what I, well, but it, real estate, I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing. So yeah, just make sure you do them. If you don't do them, that's not good, but whatever tags you put, I probably use the same ones that you do anyways. So um, don't put too much emphasis on that. I would say um, just be very thorough and make sure you do it every time. And then you should probably be, it should probably be good enough. Great question, Pat. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, just a quick question. I uh, hope you can hear me. It's a little hard breathing through this mask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, the uh, being really basic, um, you blurred your background. Is that because you people fixate on the background? Is it just that you just didn't? It's a stylistic. It's a stylistic choice. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I don't, my, if, do you yeah. do you find if you if you have a, a background that is uh, that you think may be of interest, um, just to, uh, it's kind of like a second, a second way for them to look at. They're looking and uh, looking at you. They're looking at the background. It, it may keep their attention a little longer on you. And yeah. Started. Absolutely. That's what I personally do. Um, I, I'm, um, I always I fixate on that because people, when they they when you're like you're like you meet somebody like okay I'm starting to like this person. Let's find out more about their background. But this time, literally, they're looking at your channel. Let's see more about him. Now, I personally get a bad impression from people who make videos like and have sales books in the back. I just personally don't like that. So I would rather have personal things about what I'm interested in. That way, not not intentionally, but it's just because I like these things. And if my people that are watching the video happen to have the same likes as me, then it just makes that stronger. So okay. Mike, if you're into, I don't know, you have that mask on, maybe into uh, painting or hunting or whatever. Um, then I would have things in the back that are you like. Now, you risk alienating a very small percentage, but the ones that are actually into the same things you are, you're going to make a stronger connection with. I appreciate that. Thank you. No worries. Best of luck out there. Watch out for that. No. I don't know, man. That mask, it scares me. It scares the looking at me. Any uh, other questions? Hard, hard uh, happy hour. I have to use an extra long straw. <laughs> That's funny. Anyone else have a question? What do you use for keyword searches? Um... Like when I'm researching a video, yeah, I just search what what another person would be looking for. So I don't know if you were here in the beginning. I, I talked about where I'm sorry I joined late. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so if I have a video I want to make about let's say down payment assistance programs, I'd go and just go on YouTube search down payment assistance programs, and I watch the top five videos that pop up to see what my competition is. Um, and then I once I understand what they're talking about, I find out what value those people didn't give and what value could I bring to that to those people that watch those videos. So um, keyword searches, I just search what a consumer would search for my topic of my video. Awesome, thank mm -hmm. you. No worries. Javier? Yes. I am thinking of um, do it, starting at YouTube. I've just put my house in the market. It's it's a nice house and I just had someone go with a GoPro and st or you know do some photographs outside. But I have great horned owls that live on the property and I want to be outside. I want to do some when they start flying, the young ones are starting to fly around me and stuff. Is there something I need to do or is that more like audio that's going to be my issue because I'm outside or so you're, you're doing most of your videos inside and I'm thinking of mine will be So outside. then I would recommend you get a lapel mic. Uh, okay. Those mics that are like uh, like a little wires, and then they come and they just attach to your your shirt. Have that that way, wherever what's going on it doesn't matter. They just can hear what's coming out of your mouth. That's that's Great. what I would recommend. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other last questions, guys? 
I placed my question on the chat. Okay, Nancy. It's awesome that you're saying that our first videos will be bad. Recent somebody asked me to do a fitness routine. The person who made the video used his iPhone for that video. Do you think just starting with the iPhone is that good? You know what's funny, Nancy, is my my kid is in this uh, hip hop dance thing, <laughs> and he started um, like you know they, they started putting out videos right away, and I was really impressed by it. And then I started noticing, you know, I think I saw a behind the scenes photo or something. It's an iPhone, <laughs> so. I would not be discouraged by starting with an iPhone. A lot of iPhones will shoot good quality. Like, um, I think what's more important is if you're going to shoot with your iPhone, make sure to invest into a, a small mic, a $50 USB mic or something that connects to your computer. That way your audio is better than your video. So um, I would say if you don't want to invest in a camera, that's fine. Invest in a small mic, uh, you know, USB mic that connects to your phone. Or I believe they even have mics that connect to your, uh, sorry, small USB mic that connects to your laptop or your computer. But I think now they actually have mics that connect to your phone even. So I would invest in that for sure. Okay, one more question. What do you think about having a little music in the background? I, yeah, I think I, I said in the, what I do is I create the videos. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once it's created, I add the audio at the very end, I add it very low volume. I, a lot of my videos when I first started off were high volume music. And they, um, a lot of my subscribers would give me crap from. So just make sure they're low audio. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. Um, it's for sure. It, it really makes it, at least personally, I prefer it. Yeah, I think that's one of the things. Uh, I'm kind of like a music person. Um, when I listen to music, it's when I start taking action. Otherwise, I get a little scared. So okay. I think that music motivates me. <laughs> That'd be good. And then go ahead and add it on your, on your videos. Kelly, are we okay that we're over right now? Or are you ready to kick us out? No, I, people are dropping off okay. if they need to. So it's their okay. prerogative, I guess. <laughs> last, any last questions, guys? Elizabeth. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. I really pre Oh, you have a question? Oh, no, no I think she was waving. You're kissing. Okay. <laughs> we well, never know guys. what Elizabeth is doing. <laughs> um, if you guys, I know, I, if hopefully you guys are good. If you guys want to see her more from me or do another class, I'll talk to Kelly about it. But I appreciate you guys spending an hour, hour and a half with me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, follow me on Instagram. I'm here if you need anything. Thanks, Perfect. Javier. All right. Thank see you guys. Bye-bye.